In accordance with the mission and vision of the Administrative Officers Forum of the Delta State Civil Service, the training and retraining of our members has remained a veritable tool for building their members' capacity while delivering on government policies. It is in line with the above that the Forum has continued to organize befitting seminars to enrich her members' knowledge and broaden their horizon. One of such seminars, held on Wednesday, the 22nd of September 2021, when the Forum had her maiden annual lecture series with the theme Evolving a robust public service devoid of corruption and financial crimes. Our new colleagues who may not be acquainted with me, my name is Mr. Ebok Inyongitomori, an assistant director working in the Delta State Primary Health Care Development Agency. I function as the director of administration in that agency. I will be anchoring this morning's event and consume to the table before us so that the moment Head of service, the chairman of the occasion, and our guest lecturer comes. We will hit the ground running. desire by picking this theme can best be explained by the chairman of the forum. The agriculture forum consists of personnel of the agriculture leader of the civil service from the rank of administrative officer K2, salary level 8, to current secretaries appointed from the leader. The forum's mission is to attain the status of the elite human resource base for educational service delivery in the civil service of the other state. To this end, we strive to deliver our government policies, programs and services through the application of knowledge, discipline, industry and commitment to excellence. In his opening remark, Mr. Oke Ophili, the chairman of the occasion thanked the officers of the forum for putting these lecture series together and also for choosing the right theme. The wish of every elder parent is for the child to do better than he or she. The founding of this forum, which is a great child of you younger ones, is both novel and ingenious. In addition, the body has gone ahead to a to entrench strong esprit de corps among administrative officers beyond what existed in our time. Well done. I consider this year's lecture the mother of all lectures 
organized so far by this association and the sound bites will reverberate for a very long time to come. The packaging of this year's lecture is an eloquent testimony of a highly focused, serious minded and above all, a peace setting forum in the Delta State Civil Service under the distinguished chairmanship of Mr. S. Mingo Diateke. The keynote lecture, which was delivered by the executive chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Mr. Abdul Rashid Bawa, was an eye opener to many gray areas in the war against economic and financial crimes. The economic crime watchdog, who was represented by Mr. Benedict Agweye, had this to say. I feel quite honored to be here this morning representing the executive chairman of the EFCC. It was the chairman's earnest desire to be here with you this morning. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it. But again, due to the importance that uh, he places on this invitation, he insisted that I must be here this morning. Without wasting your time, I will quickly go into his paper because I'm here this morning as a messenger. And the title of this paper is Evolving a Robust Public Service, Devoid of Corruption and Financial Crimes, which is a keynote lecture delivered at the annual lecture series of the Administrative Officers Forum, Delta State Civil Service, by the Executive Chairman EFCC, Mr. Abdul Rashid Bawa. The acceptance of this offer to deliver the keynote lecture is premised on the need to leverage education and awareness creation, hinged on public enlightenment and the push for inclusion of anti-corruption activities in public institutions and schools as we aim for a cultural shift on how corruption is perceived. This is one of the legs in our tripod approach of zero level tolerance to economic and financial crimes at the EFCC. The other two legs being deterrence through rigorous law enforcement and of course prevention through the strengthening of institutional internal control mechanisms. I know that I speak for many when I say corruption and financial crimes continue to be one of the greatest challenges of our time. It's a problem that threatens the very existence and continuous survival of our nation. There's no gain saying the fact that corruption and other forms of financial malfeasance have become malignant tumors that have eaten deep into every facet of our society. The ravaging nature of these crimes can only equate crimes against humanity due to their far-reaching impact on the lives and livelihoods of many. These crimes undermine democracy and the rule of law, it distorts economic activities and its financial markets, and foster an environment for organized crime and terrorism, which has become in our society today, which has become prevalent in our society today. Much has been lost and will continue to be lost unless we collectively and collaboratively join hands in strengthening the institutional frameworks of the public and private sectors of our society. Let me lay some foundation to this engagement. What is corruption? Corruption can simply be defined as abuse of entrusted power for personal gain through dishonest or unethical conduct by a person in position of authority. Examples of corruption include bribery, embezzlement, theft and fraud, graft, extortion, forgery, inflation of contracts, the creation of other public administration in Nigeria. There have been several cases of official misuse of funds and resources dating back to the colonial era. The inception of public administration coupled with the discovery of mineral resources, especially oil and natural gas, are two major events seem to have led to the increase in corruption practices in Nigeria. I think corruption is bribery in connection with the implementation of existing laws, rules and regulations, and thus different from grand corruption, 
or political corruption. Petty corruption refers to the modest sums of money usually involved and has also involved low level and street level to name the kind of corruption that people can experience more or less daily. The dependence of corruption is so much that one is expected to perform before he or she gets something done by persons responsible for providing the services required. Critical and life threatening essential services are not spared from this Malay either. The virus state government cannot remain aloof, as I think an important entry point for reform initiatives at this level is political way, which talks to something this, and when it is in limited supply, it is nearly impossible for any form of corruption reform initiative to succeed. Public office holders to engage in corruption and financial crimes is largely influenced by the available opportunity for personal benefits. These opportunities, therefore, must be taken away. The duties of a public officer require following a number of ethical principles and values. After his keynote lecture, the EFCC boss made a presentation to the chairman of the firm. So that they don't think it is money. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't come to your office and uh, begin to uh, 100 days of the executive chairman in office. And he insisted that I must bring these flyers. It was time for an overview of the lecture. This was done by no other person than the chairman of the day, Mr. Oke Ophili. According to the chairman, economic and financial grants commission, there is no day saying the facts that corruption and other forms of financial malfeasance have become malignant towards, not benign towards, but malignant towards cancerous that are beating into, into every facet of our society. The ravaging nature of these crimes can only equate crimes against humanity. These are very serious words. Crimes against humanity. After his overview section, it was time for participants to ask questions and add their voices to the lecture topic. As to us throw light on that aspect. That is why I'm in love with those who are in the Catholic, because we have a conference. Without conference, God will not hear your prayers. Talk of finances, money, and all of that. So what if EFCC can begin to take a fight in terms of, do I say worker salary? Is it possible? For you to take it up with government to say, what do we do to increase the salaries of workers? His suggestion to the chairman of the forum to please kindly work in collaboration with the office of the head of service that officers on administrative or directorate cadre. We should please take it upon us, we should take it upon ourselves to mentor those who are working with us from subordinate angle. The closing remark was given by the Dean of the firm, who is also the most senior officer in the civil service, Dr. Chooks Wami. Finally, also thank each and every one of us that has Thank you very much. In his remark, the head of civil service and head of Kadar, Mr. Reginald Bayoko, MNI, represented by Mr. Maxwell Awuse, had this to say. It is my well considered opinion that the key notes speaker has not just the team of the lecture. Going forward, the board notes lies on us to invite for the elimination of all forms of corruption, not only in the public service, but also in the forum presented awards to the EFCC boss and Chief Patrick Isioma Oyobi, a one time head of civil service of the state and patron of the forum. Oyobi, he has said, in recognition of his leadership, 
It was a very good one. Uh, we work according to rules and regulations. And uh, where there is knowledge, compliance is easy. Uh, so many things we do without uh, actually knowing either the basis or the implications. With uh, today's uh, uh, lecture, I know many people will be informed and better, that, better for them in the performance of their duties. A prayer and hope is that the officers who have uh, been privileged to pass through this will imbibe or rather implement what they have imbibed. By so doing, the service will be a better place. It's a welcome development because we know that corruption has eaten deep into the Nigerian fabric. In every segment of the uh, Nigerian economy, corruption has eaten deep. I believe that we will do better, especially in the area of um, avoiding corruption and the financial crime. It is important at this point to underscore the efforts of the organizers at ensuring a successful event of this magnitude. A lot of careful planning and series of meetings were held by the organizing committee. No doubt, the efforts put in by the escort and organizing committee has paid off with a resounding success. So, every that we are to be, we should put it into practice. It's my pleasure and privilege to appreciate everyone who has made this occasion a huge success. Um, those we invited, especially the Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, who made every effort to be here, but uh, following uh, some last-minute uh, changes, sent a capable representative. We say a big thank you. We thank all our patrons, uh, former heads of service, and uh, former permanent secretaries for their time. And for all the meaningful contributions made in the course of the activity today, we are most grateful. My colleague admin officers who ensured that the turnout was quite impressive. What else can we say? It's been a huge success and we are thankful to God.